Tomorrow is gonna be a really big day. David Wilcox, Route Master, Ryan Francione, and I are going to ride to the coast through logging roads, decommissioned logging roads, gravel, and who knows what else he's got planned for us. The temperature is between 29 and 35 degrees. Freezing rain is predicted. We haven't been riding much because it's winter. I'm a little excited, but I'm mostly nervous. What could possibly go wrong? Have I mentioned I'm a little nervous? Per Ryan's advice, he said to bring at least three extra pairs of gloves. That's a lot of gloves. So I got one, two, three, and there's a fourth one in my jacket. I, I, I've got so many clothes on. I went with just full civilian jacket. I wanted to layer up because I'm kind of nervous. There's a decent amount of rain that's expected for this ride today. Hence all the crazy gear and the abundance of gloves. Oh, and the fact that it's hovering right above and below freezing. It's like just touching that freezing line, which is the shittiest weather. Because then that rain kind of freezes, but it's still rain and it's just... And I'm debating on if I should take the box of raisins. I just expect them to be like eating little sugary pebbles in the middle of the day. Ice cold... But the box is so cute. How many miles in so far? 16. 16. And 8. And we're off. I swear it. Even though we can't see shit. What is this thing? Not sure. <laughs> Ryan uh, gifted us these power power treats. Not to, not to dull, got a squash burrito with a delicate sprinkling of coconut and a couple of sweet potato fries shoved inside <laughs> <laughs> And it looks actually a little bit frozen as well. What do I have? You have the same thing, but without the coconut. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. What's going on here? There's a good chance we're gonna probably have to wash some dishes in order to pay for the hotel room tonight. So I figure, I mean, the finger list is kind of I think it's good, because there's no such thing as waterproof gloves, except for dish gloves. So I think this is the plan. We'll have David pull us the whole way there, and Ryan and I will just uh, eat cheese sandwiches and talk about football. Hey, hey, get back to work. What do you got here? A uh, little hatari. Usually not all at once. Yeah, oh, that should be good. Oh my god, that smells amazing. Whoa! Oh, that can't <laughs> Yeah! Oh yeah. <laughs> That's gonna keep us going. There is a kick to that that is like... Otherworldly. We got CBD, THC, MCT oil, Spirit Quest Guide, inoculates. What's going on here? What's going on? What do we got? You need a hand? I just, uh... <laughs> the size of that thing! You guys like hike, hike and biker? <laughs> A fair bit of climbing on this route. <laughs> Has the adventure begun yet? Almost. <laughs> 
My favorite part about Ryan's bike is the brakes and down tube shifting. It's such a struggle. Reminds me of my favorite Japanese story though. You know, it takes a while to be able to ask kind of intimate questions with a Japanese friend, but eventually you get there. And I said, hey, so everybody here in Japan is so nice to you all the time. Like how much of that is genuine and how much of that is just culturally fake? And he said, ah, oh, maybe 100% fake. <laughs> 50 miles in, got about 4,500 feet of elevation. Four and a half hours rolling time, halfway. I think we got this. <sighs> Fuck. Yo, that climb was gnarly. That thing took it out of me. I'm kind of stoked on this. The loony bin that holds the thermoflask of hot liquid is working fantastic for the long ride. 24 ounces hot stuff and you just drink it on the go. A plus. That's my sandwich. What's in it? Not very much really. Avocado and coconut oil and salt and pepper. That's it. I like that. That's a smart sandwich. Mm, it's good though. Yeah. You can't buy a sandwich that simple. It's true. Especially in timber. <laughs> about once a ride as you may or may not have noticed straight up highway 26 just to round out the route that guy has a sticker that says tits off road <laughs> Now it's raining. Good thing I went full Gore-Tex warrior for this ride. We got about 30 minutes till it gets dark and we still got 40 miles to go. It's chilly, it's been wet and difficult. Okay, let's see how this goes. It's gonna get dark any minute and this thing sucks in the dark so I might have to just check you once we're there if we ever make it. What time is it? We made it. Barely. So for the last three hours we've been riding in the dark and in the pouring rain on Highway 101, 
That's not a big deal, is it? <laughs> it's over. I'm ready to be done though. Oh yeah. This is two days later, recovery snow ride. That ride was way gnarly and I was so over it for the last three hours. A lot of darkness, a lot of rain, a lot of climbing. Yeah. There was one section that was dark gravel with potholes in the pouring rain and my dinky ass nog like, oh man, it was hard. Generator light, word to the wise. Those two crazy bastards got up the next day and rode 136 miles back to Portland through gravel, through logging roads, through dead ends in some sub 30 degree weather. I was so glad I didn't go with them. That is gnarly, but they made it. Champs. That's a next level of rider right there. That's next dimensional. I'm not in that dimension, nor do I think I ever want to be. The ride by the numbers, 107 miles, nine hours and 32 minutes rolling time, 9,600 feet of elevation. The average temp was 32 degrees, basically the coldest point that rain can be. Good times.